Hey Falcons, welcome to the College and Career Corner, where we talk about all things related to your post-graduation opportunities. Today, we're going to talk about college test scores, differences between the tests, and how to prepare for them. Now, like essays, you probably aren't looking forward to testing for college. Maybe you've already taken one of the tests and you're not satisfied with your scores, or maybe you're currently dreading taking one of the tests. Maybe you're a bad test taker and you're nervous about how that would affect your college admission, but just to help ease some of your concerns, let's go over the tests, their differences, and how to prepare for them. Before we look at the differences between the tests, it is important to note that many colleges and universities accept both the SAT and ACT, so neither test is inherently better than the other one. It is a good idea to research the requirements of the schools you're interested in and take the test that is best suited for your strengths. With that said, here are the areas where there are differences between the tests. The major area is just in content. The SAT focuses a little bit more on reading, writing, and math, while the ACT covers English, math, reading, and science. The SAT no longer has an essay, but the ACT has an optional essay. As far as scoring goes, they're just different scores. The SAT has a total score range of 400 to 1600, and they've got separate small scores for reading, writing, and math. The ACT has a total score range of 1 to 36, and they've got separate scores for each of their four sections. The SAT is slightly longer than the ACT with a total time of about three hours. The ACT is about two hours and 55 minutes, but there is an additional 40 minutes for the essay if you choose to take it. Now, as far as difficulty goes, both tests are challenging, but the difficulty level may vary depending on your strengths and weaknesses. Generally, the SAT is considered more difficult for students who excel in math while the ACT may be more challenging for students who struggle with science. But honestly, there's not a ton of difficulty differences between the two tests. I'd recommend taking both if you're concerned about difficulty. So the scores you need to get into competitive colleges will vary, and that's depending on the specific school and your individual circumstances. Now, highly selective colleges typically have high standards for test scores, but they also consider other factors such as your GPA, the difficulty of your high school classes, your extracurricular activities, essays, recommendation letters, and a few other factors. As a general guideline, though, to be competitive for admission to some highly selective colleges, you should aim for SAT scores of at least a 1450 or above and ACT scores of at least 33 or above. You don't have to take them both. Again, you don't have to take them both, but send the one that's better, right? It is important to keep in mind too that these scores aren't a guarantee of admission. And again, a lot of other factors are considered. It's also important to note that Many highly selective colleges have adopted test optional policies, so they don't necessarily require the SAT or ACT for admission. Again, they'll consider other aspects of your application, even if a college is test optional though. Even if they're test optional, strong test scores can still be very beneficial for demonstrating academic readiness and your potential. Ultimately, I recommend researching the specific requirements and expectations for the schools you're interested in and work towards achieving the highest scores possible while also focusing on the other aspects of your application. For some colleges, there's actually a third option for testing, the AccuPlacer. The AccuPlacer is a computerized placement test that is used by many colleges and universities to assess students' readiness for college-level courses in areas such as reading, writing, and math. The test is typically administered to incoming students during the admissions process or at orientation. Unlike the SAT and ACT though, the AccuPlacer is not usually used for college admissions. Rather, it's used to determine course placement. However, some colleges do use the AccuPlacer in lieu of the SAT or ACT for admission. Depending on your AccuPlacer scores, you may be placed into remedial or developmental courses to help you build the skills needed for college-level work. 
The IQ Placer includes multiple choice questions that adapt to your skill level as you progress through the test. The test isn't timed, and you can typically take as long as you need to complete each section. Personally, if you're applying for a college that requires test scores and they give you the option of the AccuPlacer, I have found that the AccuPlacer is a little bit easier and a little bit less stressful than the SAT and ACT. Now that we've talked about the tests, let's go over test prep. Preparing for the SAT and ACT can be a challenging process, but with the right strategies, you can increase your potential for a good score. Here are some tips for preparing for these tests. Number one, understand the test format and content. Start by familiarizing yourself with sample questions. Take some practice tests to get an idea about what to expect on the test day. Next, identify your strengths and weaknesses. As you're preparing, pay attention to the areas where you excel and the areas where you struggle. Is it a type of question? Is it a subject? What do you need to improve on based on that? Focus your studying on these areas where you need the most improvement. Next, create a study plan. Develop a study plan that includes specific goals and timelines for your preparation. Set aside dedicated study time each week and track your progress to stay on track. I usually recommend setting aside six to eight weeks before the test to prepare. Next, use actual study materials. There's a lot of resources available to help you prepare for the SAT and ACT. There's a lot of study guides, practice tests, online courses. Just make sure you use them to supplement your study plan. If you're having trouble finding some of these plans or some of these courses, let me know. I'll be happy to help you find them. Consider tutoring or test prep classes. If you've already taken the SAT or ACT a couple of times and you're struggling to improve it on your own, consider also working with a tutor or enrolling in a test prep class. These are usually paid services, but they can provide more personal instruction and some targeted support. And finally, take care of yourself. Remember to care for yourself as you're preparing for these tests. When you're getting ready to actually test, Try to get a lot of sleep, eat a healthy diet, exercise regularly, and don't stress too much. If you can do that throughout the process, but especially a couple days before the test, you're going to be in the best condition you can be in on the test day. If you research the test and prepare for them by following these tips, you are going to increase your chances of getting a higher score. And I hope this has helped explain testing for college and the different tests that are offered. If you've got any questions for me, like always, you can book an appointment with me through eClass. Have a great day and go Falcons.